I uh, I never wanted to go in the army. I I didn't want, I didn't like sleeping in the mud and that kind of stuff. And I figured if I died, I wanted to die quick and soonly, and that the hell with that. I didn't want to see a lot of blood and guts. So I joined the navy. But I one night I saw on the on a, uh, leaving a little store where we hung out. They had a book of uh, co uh, current magazines, and they had the Liberty and Colliers and all those uh, Saturday evening post. There was a picture of this chap looking back and he had uh, uh, on navy blues, he had his navy blues on, he had his wings and he had his white shirt and black tie and all dressed up in his navy gear and he did, I said, damn Sam, I would like to be one of them. I didn't even know what, I didn't even know what the hell it was, right? Then I bought that magazine, the Saturday Evening Post took it on right here he was a naval aviator who had been uh, shot down in the South Pacific. So I, I looked at that and I said, you know, I, I didn't have any education except 12 grades in high school. And uh, the Navy had two programs to learn to be officers. One was a V-7 and one was a V-5. A V-7 officer went through academically and he'd come out as an officer of the line in, in most anything, any branch that the Navy had. So I read that article, I found out where he could enlist. I went over there and um, went up in the Widener building up to the enlistment office. And um, they uh, told me what I had to do. And, uh, I went to the University of Pennsylvania. I, they, they called me in, in, in July, the following year. And uh, went over to the University of Penn for an academic, well, academic uh, stopover of uh, three months. And if you uh, passed that, you went on up to the next thing. They, check you out in an airplane. Well, we went from, from the University of Pennsylvania up to, <coughs> to Bethlehem, where they had a little airport and they had a few flute Piper Cubs. And um, hell, I'd never been in an airplane before. I got in that first Piper Cub and it shut the door and the door rattled and I looked down here and saw the ground and I didn't know what the hell I was getting into. Then we went from there to um, an academic session of three months down in Chapel Hill uh, we lived in a jockstrap for three months, and physically, you you would, went out in the mountains and you did rope climbing and all the basketball and boxing and things like that. Then you went from there out to a, to they had these um, uh, two wing planes called Yellow Parrels. They were the open cockpit, and the instructor sat in the front, and you sat in the back, and they were they were uh, they had two they were dual wings. Um, and you flew them for three months, and in various stages you learned how to fly upside down in loops and full stalls and semi-stalls and so forth. And then you um, went to, um, when you graduated from there, Bethlehem, you went out to um, um, Glenview, well it actually acts backwards, you went, from, you went from Chapel Hill to Glenview, Illinois, which you would have got in these uh, biplanes. And then we went from there to Pensacola. And you got in the SNJs or the AT-6, which was a scout plane. It was a, it was a low wing, we called it an SNJ. The Army called it an AT-6. It was a damn good airplane. And uh, it was just one notch below a fighter craft. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and you, you didn't do much shooting until you got down to Lauderdale and you were out over the ocean. And then that's when you got started uh, shooting at targets and dropping bombs and so on and so forth out in the Atlantic Ocean. And then I got sent to Fort Lauderdale to pick up my, my fleet craft. You, you, you gave, gave you uh, fighter bomb, fighter planes, dive bombers or torpedo bombers. I don't know how they, I don't know how they judge where the hell you fit, but I got a torpedo bomber and I got the TBF, which was a damn good airplane. TBF Avenger. Avenger, yeah. Grumman, Grumman made it. They it was a TBF when the Grummans made them, but they were making so many fighter aircraft that they couldn't make any more TBFs. So they gave that to General Motors. That's when they became TBMs. And uh, same aircraft, but the General Motors made them. And it was a it was a nice airplane. It, it was uh, uh, very stable and. Uh, it did, it did its job. So you're getting ready to get assigned to the South Pacific at some point, right? Oh, my, no question about it. We were stockpiled. 
we were uh, we were the same thing. You know, when we had the invasion of uh, D Day, think about it, Eisenhower had to build up all his reserves, and just think of the the medicine and the underwear and the food and the boats and the uh, personnel that he had to have in backing every little thing up. Well, the Navy had the same thing when they were getting ready to invade Japan. They had to stockpile pilots, and they did. And by God, we had a bunch of them. And we would have lost a lot of them. The Japanese were ready for us because they knew we were coming in. And in and, and, uh, reading about how they had built up their defenses, uh, they were, they, I mean, everybody on that island, little kids, six or seven years old, were trained to kill Americans. The, the, the guys that are coming in there. And, and uh, what little bit I've read, the Marines uh, were going to be the first ones in, and they was going, they had it set up, so they were going to have one hell of a time getting on that island. And, and we would have lost a million men, no question about it. And the Japanese would have lost another million and a half. We would have bombed the hell out of them. And, and, we, and so it was just a blessing that Truman dropped that second bomb. Well, I was out in the ocean. I was out in a carrier, out in the Atlantic Ocean, qualifying on a carrier when they dropped that second bomb. And boy, that saved old Teddy Boy. I, I mean, I, I was very happy when Truman did that. I, uh, I that was that was uh, the war was over, and I, I wasn't in any immediate danger at the time, because they had so many guys that were going to be in front of me, and they, we were short of carriers. All our good carriers were damaged or sunk, or they were, but they were still. We still had a lot of afloat. But what they did with these freighters, they put them, they put them over, they put flight decks on. Them. And that's what they call CVEs. They they call them uh, converted, uh, converted, converted, uh, converted uh, uh, freighters, and they were CVEs, and they're not more than a, a six hundred foot transport ship with a flat top on it, and uh, that's what we had. We, well, we had a hell of a lot of them out in the Pacific. We had a lot of them, and they could carry maybe, I guess, fifty four planes. I guess uh, I don't remember the exact amount number of planes, but they. They had zillion. They had a lot of them, and they were all stacked over in in in, uh, in the Philippines and around that area. Well, when when we dropped that bomb, uh, they they pretty much called us back. We we were out. And we were qualifying in the carrier, and they they pulled the carrier back to Lauderdale, and we just we just flew out of Florida then just to, to keep in practicing. And we were they they, you, they came and gave us a choice: we can either stay in or if you'd like to depart. Just go in and sign up. And I went in and signed up. I wanted out. 